Okay, I like this angle. I can be warm by the fire and talk with you all and briefly. It is full moon lunar eclipse night. It is 12.55. I just got in from doing DoorDash and Uber Eats. Still in uh, Decatur, Stone Mountain, Atlanta area. And um, we have a full moon eclipse. As you can see, it is 100% full moon. Going on right now. Outside, I have my my um, stones charging in the window of my car. Y'all can see this. Okay, and um, let's take a look at the things. We are in the last two days of Scorpio season two and a half. <clears throat> it is November the 19th, 2021. My birthday was November the 15th. I did make a video on my birthday. I haven't put it out yet. I think I'll put it out with this. Just explaining um, the Mercury, Mars, and Sun conjunction in Scorpio. All the things in Scorpio. But we have this Taurus full moon tonight, which is the opposition sign of Scorpio. Um, Uranus is also in the Taurus, so in the opposition with the moon. I'm sorry, in conjunction with the moon tonight is Uranus, but in opposition with the sun is the moon and Uranus because they're both in Taurus. They're in Taurus, uh, well, the moon is in Taurus until the morning. Maybe even later tonight. Let me see. It moves into Gemini. <clears throat> At 12.50, oh no, tomorrow at 12.57. All right, because we're on the 19th. Okay. So, let's check out the transits from the app, Time Passages. Oops. Time Passages. It really doesn't have a cover. We just open it up. This is the current chart. Sun and Scorpio, Moon and Taurus. It says void, of course, which means it's in its last. The Moon is in 25 degrees, so it's in its last four degrees until it switches into Gemini. And um, Sun and Scorpio is in 27 degrees. So we are pretty much wrapping up Scorpio season this weekend because it's Friday. <laughs> All right, so the current chart. Just to give you all a briefing really quick. As I explained, Sun is in Scorpio. Moon is in Taurus. Mercury is in Scorpio. Venus is in Capricorn. We've talked about Venus. We're going to talk about Venus in Capricorn for like five months. Because <laughs> it'll be in retrograde. She just entered her pre-shadow. Um, Mars in Scorpio. Jupiter in Aquarius. Saturn in Aquarius. So anything is in a fixed sign right now. Fixed signs are Scorpio, Taurus. Aquarius and Leo is going through it right now. Fixed signs don't like change. I like change, but I'm having a difficult time changing. Um, my birthday was... <laughs> this whole week has been kind of like lacks of days ago, for better words. But, um, for lack of better words. But it is the Taurus moon. The Taurus moon is in... Um, I'm lost for words. <laughs> the Taurus moon is, and in, 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 in remember, well, I don't know if you remember, as I was saying, my Mercury's in Sag, and Mercury is in Scorpio, 21 degrees, so we have about another week or two, week and a half maybe, before Mercury moves into Sagittarius, which is its detriment, its fall, rather. It's, um... The way I'm talking now. <laughs> like Mercury and Gemini is home in Gemini, which is the opposition sign of, of Sagittarius. And even though Sagittarius is very exciting and positive, as you can see, some exciting things come out of my mouth and definitely positive things. But it is hard to be 
expressing things the way I want to express them. I don't have the gift of gab. <laughs> um, my Lilith is in Gemini, which is like me repressing the gift of gab that I do have. I can write very well. I can think it up. But when it comes out, <laughs> then I'm working on it. But speaking of the opposite of detriment, exaltation. When, this, when the moon is in Scorpio, it's in its detriment. It's not doing very well. Our emotions are on overload. It's very intense. But it's, when it's in Taurus, it's the opposite. It's in its exaltation. So this not only being a lunar eclipse, eclipses being long-lasting energy, big changes, big um, let goes too because full moons are releasing energy. Once the moon gets to 100, it goes to 99 and on down. And <clears throat> that is like releasing of energies. We're building up to it. When we get to the full moon, we start releasing it. So we're releasing um, definitely the Sagittarius and Gemini energy because the nodes are pretty much getting ready to move into the zero degree mark, which is like a clean slate. And then it goes into Scorpio and Taurus very soon. Um, uh, well, North Node and Gemini and Sagittarius and the South Node are at one degree in 42 minutes and they're in retrograde. So it is going backwards. <clears throat> I would say by the middle of December, we'll be at the zero degree. So we'll talk about it, the nodes definitely by them. Um, but the Taurus moon today, it, it came yesterday actually, last evening. But today, with all the troubles of the week, <laughs> with all the heavy energy of Mercury and, and Scorpio and Mars and Scorpio and and the sun in Scorpio, my birthday, the pressures of that, <laughs> the pressures of turning 44. Um, the week didn't go so well until today when I got call after call and email after email and offer after offer and motivation after motivation. And I want to thank Noni. I want to thank Fari. I want to thank Yakenda. I want to thank Wesley. I want to thank um, Kiva, I think is her name. I want to thank Uber Eats and DoorDash. I mean, this has been a good day for finances and learning different ways to get financed. Um, you know, job offers come and go, but um, I really have been having a struggle with the changes with leaving jobs alone and going into my own business. I've started things, haven't finished them. You know, um, that's what this moon is about. This moon is about exalting your finances, growing them, evolving them, right? And your security with finances. Um, the moon is the energy overall, so this is all of us. I, I even met somebody out today, um, you know, because Scorpio and, and Taurus energy is definitely love energy. Taurus represents Venus. Venus is in Capricorn, um, another Earth sign, so... It's definitely about loyalty out here and who's loyal to you. So that's why I want to shout out everybody because I appreciate your loyalty in helping me through these changes that are drastically happening. Not just to me, to a lot of us. And I just appreciate that people see what I see and understand what I'm trying to manifest and, and carry on to the future. All right, but... um. What I was also saying is that Jupiter is squaring, um, excuse me, the, all the other fixed signs. And so is Saturn because they're both in Aquarius. So we have squares to the moon, Mercury, the sun, and Mars because they're all in other fixed signs. There's nothing currently in Leo, but Leo still can be um, a part of this fixation of energies because all the fixed signs are really feeling this. We have Pluto still in Capricorn. Pluto and Venus are getting ready to make a conjunction in Capricorn. Chiron and Aries healing us. Self work all of us have to do. So just going over the weekly. North Node is still in Gemini, like I said. And the Ascendant is in Virgo. We got a lot of Earth energy. The Midhaven is in Gemini. We got a lot of Earth energy going on, though. And water energy for a few more days. And then when Sagittarius energy comes in, by the end of this weekend, the, 
the Sagittarius energy is going to lighten some things up. Still make it fire because it's a fire sign, but it's more, uh, you, you've come through a lot in the Scorpio season, especially as Scorpios, Tauruses, Leos, and Aquarius. And the message I'm trying to get across here is that we've gone through a lot, especially in this deep, dark, getting to the depth, investigating intensely <laughs> season of Scorpio season. And it is now time to wisely go forward, positively manifesting, expanding, exaggerating your energies and lessons that you've learned. This lunar eclipse not only is a full moon, but eclipse again is a cycle of other similar eclipses in the same, uh, what is the word, not dimension, <laughs> the same uh, axis, like the axis is of the, uh, the opposite sign. So we've been in the Sagittarius and Gemini eclipses for 18 months. This starts the Scorpio and Taurus eclipses. So most of the eclipses, the four that are coming up after this one tonight is um, all in Taurus and Scorpio. I think there's one in Sagittarius for the last, that'll be the end of that cycle. And then we'll have the rest of them in between Taurus and Scorpio until 2023. So heavy energy, a lot about finances, a lot about love, the depth of love, the things that are in the South Node, which will be in Scorpio starting January 2019, will need to be evolved, meaning that they are things that we need to move away from or either grow from. And the things in, because everybody is supposed to go towards the path of the North Node, the, the whole um, lesson with the North Node or purpose, because the North Nodes represent the houses, they are um, accessed by the moon and the ascendant. We'll save that for the North Node and South Node episode, but um, they are definitely going to create a lot of financial change, a lot of structures, restructuring, especially with Uranus, the New World, and Taurus, conjuncting with the North Node starting next year. And they both will stay in Taurus, um, North Node until 2023, I think Uranus 2024, when it goes into Gemini. Um, the North Node in 2023 will go into Aries and Libra, which is my North Node, Libra. <laughs> but anyway, look forward to some intensity. I'm not going to say this is going to be great always, but financial things are changing. Some of the information I got today was about the changing in finances and how to get onto it. And whereas I'm definitely a truther and a fighter for things that are right and constitutional, the Pluto and return, who knows what's going to happen with that constitution? Who knows if we're going to fight to really follow it or if we're going to create a new one? Who knows? The changes are here. <laughs> All right, so y'all have a great eclipse evening um <clears throat> i'm gonna show maybe hopefully i'm staying up it's almost 1 11 i say i'm staying up until maybe another hour so i can see the eclipse possibly if not i'm gonna try to get up at like four and glance at it and five is when it's supposed to be over so the eclipse happens tonight from like 2 15 to 5 45 in the morning it's a lunar eclipse, so it'll look different from a uh, solar eclipse. I believe with lunar eclipses, the sun passes. Let me get this right for y'all right now. <laughs> lunar eclipse. The sun passes behind it. <sighs> what is a lunar eclipse? <laughs> y'all. Let me see if I'll cut this up. What is a lunar eclipse? The lunar eclipse is when the moon moves into the Earth's shadow. The Earth's shadow, okay? So the moon is behind the Earth. 
This can only occur when the sun, earth, and moon are exact or very closely aligned with earth between the other two. So the earth is what we'll see cross in front of the moon. So <laughs> let's see how that goes in real time because it's supposed to be best in the United States. 111 Ashe. This is TMZ. Teaching everyone abundantly empowering money is the key in lightning every day. And I believe we had 11, 11 when I was showing y'all 111. Get a life astrology growing into divine adults and loving yourself forever. How could I forget y'all? This is called the blood moon. The blood lunar eclipse. Full moon in Taurus. Got all that? See the fire flame on my face? So I was watching The Purge last night, and did you guys know that it's set in 2022? March of 2022 to be exact. And the Pluto return of the United States is at the end of February 2022. Pluto returns happen every 250 years or so. Because of that, we personally never go through a Pluto return, but countries go through them regularly. This is the first Pluto return for the United States. A Pluto return signifies huge transformation and change for our country. And with the U.S.'s Pluto being in the second house, it is going to have a primary focus on the economy, finances, and values. Do I think creepy people in masks are going to show up at your door and try to annihilate you? No. But I am wondering if the writers and directors of this film were looking into astrology because the time frame for the night of the purge is exactly in the same time frame as the start of the Pluto return of the United States. And this movie is all about the rich versus the poor, the economy, social structures, all of that. What the